we're going to cover the process from creating a packing slip on to creating the invoice for that packing slip and then adding it to the accounting package. Today we're going to be looking at a partial shipment and we're going to be using QuickBooks Online. So I'm going to start by going to my shipping dashboard. There are many different ways to get to the work orders that we need to ship, but this is a great way to see what is actually prepped and ready for me. In this case, I'm going to choose this work order here. And I can see that I've got the last 10 parts for this order ready to go. So I'm going to go into my shipping operation and I'm going to check it out. And I'm going to add in the additional 10 parts that I'm going to ship. I'm also going to mark complete because I know that that's the last 10 parts that we need. Save my changes. And now I'm going to assign my packing slip. My packing slip will auto fill for me. And I'll submit that. And of course, from here, I can print this off and include it with the package to my customer. Now we're going to handle our invoicing and QuickBooks steps. So to do that, I'm going to go back to my packing slips module. And I'm going to look for the packing slip that I need. Now, because I did it today, it happens to show up in the current list. If I didn't and I was trying to catch up on work, I can come down to the global queries and click on client packing slips without invoice number. This is going to give me a list of all of the packing slips that have not yet been invoiced. Here's the one that we want to do now. And you can see that this is the same packing slip that we had just created. To create the invoice, I click on the button here. I get the special instructions for invoicing and now it creates my invoice. All of the data that I need should be auto-filled, including my account number. If I need to change my account number, I can do that now. But if I just submit this, you will see that it will default to the sales account number that is set at the part level. To take a quick look at that, I can open up my part number. I can go in to my accounting codes for this part record, and I can see that I can set the accounting codes here. This information is great to set on every part that you make because then you no longer have to worry about setting that at the invoicing level. My payment terms come through automatically for me from my customer PO. Another point to note is that my, my customer PO will get auto-filled from either my quote or my client contact page, depending on exactly how I created this particular PO. Now that we've created the invoice, all I need to do is go ahead and add to accounting package. When I click the button, the system will sync with QuickBooks, and it tells me that it's been added to the accounting package. You'll notice that my status is still outstanding. We're going to come back to that in just a moment. Now I'm going to go into QuickBooks, and I'm going to find my invoice. And here I get to see that this is the invoice that I had just created. Again, all of my data auto fills. But here's the important part because we want to get paid. So now I'm going to make sure that I email this to my customer and get the invoice sent to them. So this will be marked as waiting for payment. Once I'm done with that in QuickBooks, I will come back here and I will change this to booked. And to finish off this step, I'm going to click on the envelope icon once more. And that's going to add my line item here. So in this case, you can see this was a partial. So this is the last shipment that I made. There's my invoice number, how many I invoiced for, and the packing slip. Because this is the last shipment that I need for this order, and I know that I've invoiced for everything, I'm going to come over here and I'm going to mark this work order as complete. I'm going to save the page. And all of my data is logged in ProShop. It's also logged in QuickBooks. And my work order will be marked as invoiced.